Hello everyone, it's Brett here, Lionheart84, and uh, it's the first Sunday in August. It's the 7th of August, so it is in fact uh, a late Sunday as such for uh, this time of uh, this this tour, because uh, normally they're on about the 3rd or 4th of the month, but uh, obviously the dates haven't worked out that way this month, so I'm running a little bit late, and I normally do for the monthly walk-arounds. Um, it's an absolutely glorious day, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to have a quick walk around and see what's happening and uh, update on a few plants that will interest some people, see which ones um, are doing okay and which ones have completely failed. So um, this is not in including what I call the proper tropicals, though you'll see a couple on route, which I'll mention because of where I've got the pots standing, but this is really for the hardy plants that are outside all year round either planted in ground or in pots we're going to start with my ornamental patio peach because i know a few people are always interested in that it has this lovely leaf color um, it's crimson bonfire it does produce fruits but they're not really known for that which means the fruits tend to be a little bit undersized i should be able to show you one in here um, this is only about two inches across and they didn't get much bigger than that last year. Um, I'm not sure if it was in a larger pot, if it would produce bigger peaches or if because it's an ornamental variety grown really for the flowers and the leaves, if it just doesn't really, uh, they just don't get bigger than that because what I call the proper cultivated varieties would probably be up to edible size now by at uh, the end of the first week of August. Of course, some peaches don't ripen them until late August or September in this country, depending on the variety. But I've seen people picking and eating their peaches in July. So this is a long way from that. It has got, I think there's another couple in there. It's got two or three fruits on it, not easy to see, but they are no bigger than that. Um, might also be lack of water as well, of course, as we've had a particularly dry summer. So I'll have a carry on with a quick walk around. Um, this one here is my hardy tamarillo. Does have some uh, flowers on it still. I've got it in a pot. It could really do with a much bigger pot because it suffers some drought very quickly in this pot. Um, it hasn't set any fruits whatsoever. Um, let's have a look at the variety name if I can. Cyphomandra carimbiflora. Um, I've been told by several people and it seems to be the case that you need two genetically separate plants to uh, to get cross-pollination have fruits produced so um, unlike the standard tamarillo the tropical one which uh, if if mine were to ever flower is uh, self-fertile so at some stage or other I have to probably try and get seeds of one of these because if I buy from the same supplier and he's grown them from cuttings obviously they won't cross pollinate each other so um, I'm showing that one because it's one of the hardy plants if we carry on and I can slide down because some of the things are hard to uh, to show hidden below this uh, pot grown tamarillo here is my in ground uh, Myers lemon it's doing quite well this summer it's obviously quite small still has got some initial fruit set on it which is quite satisfying um, no way to know if any of them will get to uh, a usable size they never got bigger than an inch last year before the winter cold turned them yellow and they died off um, it's not really established enough yet i don't think to produce larger fruits but eventually it might get to that and it's still producing flower buds here and there so um, it's flowering quite consistently all right so running around very quickly i've got chili variegated chili and guava at the back there looks like it's suffering from drought to me so i'm going to get the hose on that later um, there's a daphne in front of it um, hasn't got any flowers on that chili and guava at all as far as i can see um, on the wall is my uh, Kiwi berry. Uh, originally bought as an Issai, turned out not to be an Issai, so that although it has a few flowers, it doesn't set fruit whatsoever. 
but I have now got some other varieties in the garden squeezed into corners so um, I'm hoping that once they flower eventually we'll get some cross pollination and may get some fruit on this. My blueberries have now finished uh, fruiting, I've got three of them, there's one here, I think this is the Chandler has the biggest fruits but there's nothing left now. Um, next to it I've got the first of my pineapple guavas, uh, this one is the mammoth, has set fruits on it, uh, again I suspect it might be struggling a bit with the fruits because of the drought we're having. We haven't had any measurable rain for weeks and weeks and weeks. So um, that is a bit of a problem at the moment. Obviously, I've got various agapanthus still in flower early in August, although the flowers are starting to go off now. And I'm, I'm going to cut the heads off this year because I don't want them expending energy on the uh, on seed production. It doesn't serve any purpose. And I've got dozens of them anyway so the last thing I need to do is uh, grow any more. There's two more uh, blueberries here they've all pretty much finished fruiting. Obviously this this variety here has got a handful left but the fruits are tiny and completely inedible now. Probably again due to lack of watering. This is my unnamed uh, variety of uh, seedling Fijawa. Um, very poor quality flowering as I've discussed before in videos the flowers don't open properly um, in fact it doesn't even seem to set any seeds any fruits this year at all but they're a very poor quality small round fruit anyway so it doesn't really matter I just use it for cross pollinating the other varieties um, as it does at least serve a purpose but I think this will be going this winter if I can manage to get it out and perhaps plant it in my parents garden as just a decorative plant for them behind there is my only in-ground persimmon it's the first one i ever got which unfortunately has turned out it has flowered and it's turned out to be a male asian persimmon so um it's never going to fruit so um i really only got it for decorative purposes but i might consider um i might consider sort of trying to graft onto it one day and see if i can get some other varieties onto it uh on the fence behind is my ornamental Passiflora varieties amethyst has those lovely sort of um, pale purple flowers in uh, phases hasn't got one open right at the moment to show you but it, what it has got interestingly is fruit on it you can just about see that but they're not in any way what I would consider to be edible in fact they're normally empty so I think the plants probably aren't fertile moving along I've got an in-ground uh, pomegranate um, unknown or unnamed variety so I'm going to guess it's a seedling grown plant I think this one came from Burncoos originally but it, it wasn't a named one but I thought I'd put one in ground and I was hoping it was going to produce a few flowers this year but it hasn't so I'm guessing next year it probably will um, behind it we've got my Caesar Pinia which does still have some flowers on it and it's got more flower buds coming so I'm not going to cut that back yet but I might have to cut it back this year to get it down to a manageable size but it does make lovely flower displays tucked away behind the pomegranate I think it's still alive oh, if I get into it is oh yeah very dry looking poor poor sunflower so I'm going to get the hose on that as well I've got some serious problems with the uh, water issues on a lot of these plants because we just haven't had any rain at all and it's easy to overlook watering them. Um, on the fence behind there I've got a trumpet vine, a campsis, which if I move back a bit hopefully you'll be able to see it's got loads of flowers on this year this is the best it's ever flowered shame they're a bit so they're so high up but it does give a nice display and the neighbours will uh, benefit from it as well and in front of that there's a buddleia a butterfly bush which I've got to obviously attract the butterflies and the bees and unusually I've actually seen a butterfly in my garden which is a rarity in suburban areas um, here's a bottle brush didn't flower this year because I cut it back heavily last year but um, it will for sure flower heavily next spring because of the cutback I was trying to make room for my triumph pineapple guava which is this one here now again this has set fruits but the growth on the fruits is really really slow I think I, they really are suffering badly 
you can see they're really suffering badly from the drought so um, it's going to cause me a problem with the fruits this year I'll be uh, I think I'll be struggling to get decent edible sized fruits um, my in-ground pawpaw also looks extremely stressed dropped all its fruits except if they're still here somewhere behind here three fruits on it but they're really really small so again I think we've got a major problem with um, lack of water here it's causing me an issue with all of the plants even the ones in ground they're just not getting any rain I mean it, it, it literally I haven't had any rain here for about I think it's six weeks uh, it's not so bad with the potted plants because I can keep on top of them uh, this is my carabine uh, plant here lights are drought out because obviously it's common to uh, mediterranean areas and i am watering it as necessary so it's doing fine um, natal plum this one here which i've repotted recently uh, carissa i think is the latin name for it it's looking really good that loves uh, mediterranean climate and it may even flower by the end of the summer um, I featured this in a separate video. This is my Chilean guava capao. Dropped all of its fruits. Um, had quite a few flowers on it, and I was expecting to get fruits this year. But again, I think the hot, dry weather and the drought has caused an issue. I believe it's got a couple of fruits left on it still, which may well ripen. Um, honeyberries don't do anything this time of the year. I've got various little fig cuttings here which are rooting one of my mulberries had a couple of fruits off that I think that one's Carmen um, this is oh can't remember its name now this evergreen that I've put in terrible really I think it's uh, Luma apiculata does produce berries that might be edible but nothing to write home about um, but it hasn't flowered yet this year though it's probably at a size where it will I think I might have to remove this branch which is well out of position on it and behind the Luma is my in-ground Yuzu um, hasn't had any fruits on it this year only produced one flower but I'm not too worried is it what it has done is it's grown extremely well so uh, provided it doesn't have any winter issues I would expect it to have plenty of flowers on it next year um, behind that is my in-ground experiment which is the yellow cherry guava again I've covered that in numerous videos specifically on guavas had a load of flowers on it this year it was planted last year at the end of summer survived the winter with a fair bit of damage but has grown back from it flowered very heavily and every single flower has dropped off so um, that's turned out to be a bit of a washout so far um, my may pop that I've planted in ground gonna have another go at trying to keep one alive obviously only put it in about two or three weeks ago so it's a very young plant but it is now growing quite well and there are actually flower buds in the leaf axle so I think it's quite likely I'll see some flowers on this by the end of by the end of August beginning of September I mean they won't they won't fruit of course even if they set fruit but I'm not worried about that main thing is that they're still uh, that it seems to be getting established and I'm hoping this position will suit it better than when I tried before so walk across to the other side I've got a tropical passiflora edulis I've got in grounds just because I didn't have anywhere else to put it we know that's not going to survive I've got an avocado seedling that was self-sown that uh, I dug it up and kept it inside over winter and I thought put it in ground for a bit of fun. Uh, obviously I've no idea what variety of seed it was. Quick look at my, I repotted some white Pakistan mulberries to try and save them. Um, one looks like it's died but the one in the middle looks like it's coming back quite well and this one's got a couple of green shoots on it as well so I may have saved two out of the three which would be nice um, first of my mulberries this one is Illinois Everbearing has actually got a few fruits on it but I think the lack of water has caused them to be very small and dry but I also repotted it in uh, in the spring which caused a problem for it probably set it back badly 
but uh, nevertheless it's looking quite healthy now so that should be okay I've got a pomegranate that was a molar delsh that died back the main tree stem died no idea why I have a suspicion it might have been caused by I put Vaseline on the trunk as an experiment to keep the ants off and I believe that it killed the plants now I, I had a video where I was suggesting people try that which I removed a while ago because um, I decided that the Vaseline was being very harmful to the plants and I actually put it on several other trees that weren't doing very well and uh, I very carefully removed all of the Vaseline in case that was causing the issue because I think that might have caused two of my um, that might have caused two of my jujubes to die as well because I was trying to control ants on them so um, I, I won't be using Vaseline on anything again um, but as this is probably grown from a cutting almost certainly this would have been grown from a cutting it wasn't a grafted tree so all of these shoots that are coming up from the base will also be molar del so I'm going to end up with a, a bush uh, pomegranate rather than a tree one flicking over the other plants very quickly one of my I'm not going to name all the persimmons one of my persimmons there behind I've got my Asian pear Shinziki um, has got a few fruits on it that haven't splitted I had a major splitting problem with the fruit so I've bagged these to try and stop the wasps getting into them um, doing quite well at the back here I've got two more kiwi berries they are in a very shady position but at least it stopped them from burning up in the heat uh, one is a male one is a female can't remember the varieties but they're doing very well so we should be seeing flowers on those in the next year or two I'm not going to cover all of my plants here because there's too many um, this is my one of my other mulberries this is the pink mold oven no fruits on at the moment there's another one I'll repotted but it's doing nicely and I expect that will uh, fruit heavily next year first of my jujubes this one is Lee has had plenty of flowers on it um, nothing set whatsoever which is a recurring theme with the jujubes here unfortunately and the other one at the back Lang has also flowered heavily and uh, has not has not set a single fruit either but again I repotted all these plants in the spring and I think I've disturbed them and I might repot them again next spring but into much bigger pots so I think they'll do much better um, squeeze through the jungle just going to show a couple of persimmons of interest this one it has this plant has got one fruit on it it's the largest persimmon I've got so far this is um, Costata or the largest one this year behind it I've got my poor poor prima which has got a few fruits on it but again they're undersized I think because of the water shortages although I have been watering the pot plants better it doesn't look very happy to be honest but um, again you, if you bear in mind these have all been repotted I think that's probably caused a lot of issues with them being set back because of this freak hot weather we've had so um, it is to be expected uh, moving just I'm just not going to go through all the persimmons there's too many but I will show this one here is a Morris Burton um, has got fruits on it it's a genuine American persimmon they produce much smaller fruits than the than the average Asian one so these won't actually get an awful lot bigger than this but they should ripen in September October um, I've had them before but they were very small and had no flavor or sweetness so I'm hoping with this all this hot weather um, going into the plants this summer we might get some sweeter fruits and the only other persimmon I've got fruits on is my gyro or gyro I think I'd call it gyro so that's got it's got four fruits have held on this tree um, and they've got more of this sort of like quadrant shape to them um, so they look as if they're going to be doing okay this year I'm quite, quite pleased about that just quickly rounding up a few plants this one is my Sichuan pepper plant Xantho, uh, Xantho xylem I think Let's just have a look at the label I have to be careful it's spiky didn't put the Latin name on it but I think it's Xantho 
Lionem or something like that. If anyone particularly needs to know, I'll check it up. It has these really sort of uh, quite spiteful thorns on it, but that's done really well. Japanese raisin tree, done very nicely as well. Um, this is my carabine, no, not my carabine, this one's my, uh, this is my Decaysnia Fargesia. This is the blue sausage uh, tree. Hybrid persimmons, plenty more persimmons here. Uh, I'm hoping next year we should really see some seeds on them. Um, goji berry, sunny decided to produce flower buds. This one's been savaged by the uh, snails this year on the lower branches, but of course, once I grow up this tall, the snail, they're too thin for the snails to get up. Down there, we've got a che fruit, that's the Chinese mulberry. Um, not quick growing, but the plant looks healthy, so I'm happy about that. Um, another pomegranate here, this one is Provence, that is a named one. Behind it, another mulberry. Um, name escapes me at the moment, but it doesn't really matter. I think it might be Carmen, that one. Now I've got my large figs in pots. And they're not doing too badly on the whole. Um, I repotted them in the spring because they were incredibly badly pot bound and it had really held them back. And now they're suddenly doing really, really well, the uh, figs. I'm really pleased with them. The only problem is some at the back are getting a bit shaded. Uh, I've got lots more varieties at the moment. Again, I'm not going to run through them all because I can't possibly remember them all. Um, but these figs are all pretty much different. Uh, different varieties here and probably some of them will fruit next year um, a couple of small seedling uh, seedling pawpaw there and the one behind is KSU Atwood it hasn't really grown in about three or four years unfortunately I think it could do with being in ground but I haven't got anywhere for it some more of my pineapple guavas or fijoas here I think this one this first one this is Coolidge now this is started very late into growth it didn't start growing until uh, until the end of July so I've got a feeling this one might turn out a few um, flowers next to it is this one is Apollo um, carelessly the other day it got a bit too dry so it suffered a little bit of um, about a bit of wilt at the end of the branches thought it was only a couple before I noticed it so that's um, that's going to grow back fine, no problem at all. Um, we have some medlar fruits this year. And uh, I think there's a four or five on the plant. I would expect them to be ready by about November. Another uh, pineapple guava. This one was looking really bad. Uh, very pot bound and I repotted it. This is Marion. And this has really recovered well. And I think it's starting to produce flower buds now. So I'm um, going to see some flowers on that soon. Uh, one of my two loquats that uh, virtually died on me and I try, I've cut them back really, really hard and put them in giant fabric pots and they seem to be coming back very well. I've got three more pineapple guavas behind there. Um, there's a Gemini, uh, another Mammoth and another Triumph and my pot grow and variegated Chilean guava. He's doing a lot, lot better. That's Flambeau, a lot better than the one in the border because this one's had plenty of water. My little flat donut peach or nectarine hasn't done much this year, but it looks healthy. So I'm hoping a new pot next spring will sort that out. Now I've got a couple um, of, two, I've got three, uh, what I hope to be rootstock persimmons to use in the future I had three named varieties which all died a year or 18 months ago. one came and wasn't named at all the nursery sold me one that wasn't what it was meant to be it was just uh, a date plum uh, diasporas lotus that was this one here it never had a grafted variety on and I've got two others here which unfortunately the grafted sections died but the root stocks have survived so I'm hoping to be able to try grafting onto these in the next year or so. Um, this is my second loquat. Um, one of them's Mrs Cookson and one's Oliver but they've um, again they've recovered very well from being I really butchered them and cut them back heavily to lose all the 
disease, what appeared to be diseased or damaged growth on them. And the new growth seems to be pretty much perfect, so I'm very pleased. That's a uh, black mulberry, Morris Negra. Uh, moving around the back, two more pineapple graph varieties, which I've featured recently um, in videos. Uh, let's check the name. I think one's Nikita. Oh, one is Nikita. Uh, what is that one? That's Nikita. And the other one is Unique. So I've got you, Nikita and Unique. Still got plenty of flowers on them. Hopefully, they're going to set some fruit. Just going to sneak around the back very quickly because you can at least have a quick look at the back of the fig trees but also I just wanted to show that my chocolate vine Akebia quinata still has fruits on it which still seem to be developing and hopefully will get to an edible size by September at which time they turn a sort of a blue colour and um, then split open squeezing out again my little kiwi is I looks fine still got fruits on it it's been cooked in the heat it hasn't dropped them yet so maybe they will still get to an edible size they should be ready probably late September October and the one that I thought had died has sent out new shoots from the base so I'm actually going to have two SI side by side here so I'm really pleased uh, really pleased with how they've done that was good news sometimes you think plants have died and they surprise you nothing much else to show here these are the new figs that I got off Connor so um, I've got to repot those perhaps today if I get time it's just finding time to do all these things that's another cage that I've had for years that needs repotting. I just don't get round to repotting anything. Shameful, really. Um, this is my large in-ground fig, which um, was bought as uh, Rouge de Bordeaux, but isn't. Uh, the conclusion I've come to in the end after lots of research is long do. And I featured it in the video yesterday, and it's still got, it's still got a braver on it. I picked three or four yesterday. Um, and it's got all these lovely main crop figs. I'm hoping uh, the pinching I did will cause them to be ready by middle of September. There's another one of my tamarillos there. So I'll probably miss some plants going round. Each time I do a tour, you forget things, remember things, but it doesn't really matter. Um, the main thing is just to give you a general overview of what's doing well and what's not. Um, next year, I'm expecting if we don't get a cold snap, that kills all the new shoots I would expect to have a lot of persimmon, persimmon flowers next year and more fruits setting on other varieties and probably the same for figs as well so thanks for watching that video I've tried to keep it as short as possible it's not easy with these long these garden tour videos because they just you just run <laughs> they just take up a lot of time I know I've left plants out but um, they'll feature in the next one anyway and we'll see how everything's looking by for September thanks for watching Please remember to uh, like the video. You're welcome to share if you think anyone might be interested. Please subscribe to my channel. And remember to click on the bell if you like updates on new videos as they come out. I'll catch up with you all soon. Brett out for now.